Well, Joel Skousen is a respected researcher, a veteran, and he's the editor of WorldAffairsBrief.com. And I was reading an article a few weeks ago when we had Chuck Baldwin on, Top Secret America, the rest of the story, and he quoted a lot of key intel developed by Joel Skousen, World Affairs Brief, uh, dealing with the dark side of the military and the police, how they're attempting to turn them into these secret police oppression squads and export what they've developed in the dungeons overseas and the black sites uh, here to the United States. And he's going to talk about that with us uh, in the next hour. But uh, he told me he was listening to the show when uh, Wayne Madsen of the NSA uh, retired, was really doing an in-depth report. He's gotten even more documents he's about to publish where everybody surrounding Barack Obama, his real name's Barry Sotaro, is CIA and Rockefeller-type foundation. And he wanted to comment on that. Uh, and so let's cover that in this short segment, uh, Joel. Then we'll get into uh, the domestic operations of Top Secret USA. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Alec. It's uh, good to be with you. I'm particularly impressed with your ability to look at the global big picture of things because I think that's essential. That's what you were asking Wayne Madsen when he said, what's the big picture about Obama? What's their purpose in putting in a, a, you know, a puppet? Uh, controlled person who's been with the CIA before. You know, once you've been with the CIA, you're, you're really very much controlled. There's very little escaping that uh, that route. In a certain sense, of course, George Bush was a, was a puppet as well, but he was a puppet meant to uh, dupe the Christian conservative right. Uh, Obama, you know, there's always a reaction. We have to look at this Hegelian conflict. There's always a reaction against uh, when a puppet goes in and, does it, and then betrays his constituency of a big whiplash. So there was a betrayal back to the left. They wanted change. They wanted out of the wars of intervention. Barack Obama comes forward to present that. I think we have to remember that it isn't that these people are the important issue. This is their way of managing the whiplash of change when they get, uh, you know, in a, <clears throat> when they try to pretend to be something they aren't, there's always a disenfranchisement, disenchantment. They try to ride the seesawing as people try to put somebody else in power to fix things. That's correct. And they always get certain things done. For example, they got certain things done during the Clinton administration. They couldn't have gotten done as much as the Republicans under Bush Sr. betrayed their cause. They can't get certain things done, which they can do under the Democrats. That's why you never have any undoing of those agendas when Bush comes in. He didn't undo anything that Clinton did. When Obama came in, he didn't undo anything he promised that Bush had done. And so you have this uh, pacification of people. I mean, you go back even to the Martin Luther King here. I know uh, either you or Wayne said, you know, he had betrayed his people were gone against him. My feeling was, in fact, because he was so much involved in prostitutes, it was going to get out, just as John F. Kennedy was so much involved in and illicit affairs in the White House, um, they couldn't. They felt they couldn't maintain, in my opinion, the the image that he was a reverend true to the cause. They decided to martyr him to advance and accelerate the agenda, which came because of the civil rights movement. No, I agree with you, and I'm concerned that after they use up Obama, they could do the same thing to him. They could. In fact, they could do this with with any number of these puppets. They could accelerate an ad agenda. Uh, I happen to think, however, that they're, uh, they're going to present us an alternative. They want a Republican in the generation for a big war that's coming up. My theory indicates that we're going to have a major third world war coming probably at the end of this next decade, and they're going to want a Republican president in there who's capable of whipping up knee-jerk patriotic reaction. I think uh, they may give, uh, let me put it this way, if they run Sarah Palin, I think she's a weak candidate. They've got all kinds of dirt on her that they can bring out when and if they want to destroy her. If they run Sarah Palin for the Republicans, I think they're going to give Barack Obama another four years. All right, stay there. Let's let's continue to see your geopolitical mapping and projecting out with your future trends forecast. You've made a lot of really accurate uh, breakdowns in the past. Joel Skousen, the editor of WorldAffairsBrief.com, is our guest. I'm Alex Jones with InfoWars.com. Joel Skousen is a political scientist by training, specializing in the philosophy of law and constitutional theory. He's also a designer of high security residences and retreats. He's a self-sufficient in high security homes throughout North America. He has consulted in Central America as well. His latest book in the field is Strategic Relocation North American Guide to Safe Places. He's active in consulting with persons who need to relocate for security reasons. 
Uh, and it goes on. Uh, Joel was raised in Oregon, later served as a fighter pilot for the U.S. Marine Corps during Vietnam era, prior to beginning his design firm specializing in high security. And, of course, uh, was it an uncle that wrote one of the best-selling books exposing the whole globalist takeover plan? That's correct. My uncle was W. Cleon Skousen, who first of all started out with a very, very excellent historical book called The Naked Communist. That was in the days that conservatives thought that communism was the real problem. He woke up sometime in the 60s and, and noted that, in fact, the, the capitalists, uh, which turned out to actually be globalists, not you know, real, honest, true far, free market capitalists, were running the communists and facilitating them. And so he wrote the book The Naked Capitalist which was a blockbuster, started the entire uh, understanding in the world about conspiracy theory relative to our own government. Well, that's right. And, and now it's declassified what he wrote about and what uh, other uh, uh, investigators uh, in Congress uh, brought out and, and, and Anthony Sutton exposed as well. That's right. That, that Hitler had been funded by the, mainly England, that the U.S. had helped put the Bolsheviks in, that they helped put Mao in. And now that's been declassified. I mean, that's on the History Channel. They, they create the crisis to offer the solution, and they, it's robber barons who want a global, consolidated, anti-free market system. And now we're coming to the end of the road on that. And I remember being about 10 years old, and I could really start to read good, that the naked communist and the naked capitalist were on the bookshelf at my uh, dad's parents' uh, uh, at my uh, fraternal grandparents' house, and I remember reading part of that book when I was there for a week during the summer, and that being one of the catalysts to understanding what was happening. Then I read None Dare Call a Conspiracy when I was about 14, and then I went out and researched real history and found out it was very accurate. Uh, but, but for those who just joined us, getting back into their long-term strategic goal with Obama, it's as if they wanted him to come in, get their agenda through, but then... Uh, really anger the public so they go with a fake right-wing candidate, as you were saying, lining up for World War III. Uh, please continue with what you see coming in the near future for the United States and the world. Then we'll get into the domestic control grid they're putting into place. Well, that's exactly right. What I was heading for is that they always create a reaction to these policies. Uh, the, econo the economy cannot be solved, at least not with Keynesian economics or government-controlled interference. It can't be control uh, solved with the Fed having fiat monetary powers. And so they know that eventually they're going to have a backlash against anyone who comes in and promises change and success, whether it's the war in Afghanistan, the war in Iraq. None of that stuff ends at night. So in the backlash, they're always preparing someone else on the opposite side, Team B, as I call it, they have Team A and Team B. They control both sides. And they are setting us up right now in the Republican side of the specter for this backlash against Obama. And uh, it, it's very telling, as I point out in my World Affairs Brief analysis, if they pick someone like Palin, who is extremely vulnerable, who has, you know, she's got good charisma, they've been giving her a lot of play on, uh, on Fox, which is the false conservative network, in my opinion. Um, and they're also building up Newt Gingrich. They're also uh, keeping Mike Huck Huckabee right there in the, uh, in the forefront. They're keeping Mike Huck Huckabee on tap so that if Mitt Romney, a non-conspirator, ends up making a big, strong play, they've got a way to, uh, to throw him out of the equation like they did last election. Are you saying Mitt Romney's good? No, I'm not. I'm saying that he is not a knowing conspirator with... The people, they can't afford to let someone as smart as Romney, even though he's bending over backwards to try to be one of them, he isn't. And there's a reason for that. And that is, he's too ambitious. He wants to be president. Those people we never trust to be honest conservatives. Uh, but being as smart as he is, if he did get into president, he'd be like Reagan. He'd see too much. He wants to do uh, what's popular because he understands that's, that's, he doesn't want to be destroyed. Well, that's right. But he also, you know, he does have some principles, and he they don't have a lot of dirt on him, so they can't twist his arms. Now, now how does Ron Paul play in, though? Because you gave a speech a few years ago that I agreed with, saying don't go with Mitt Romney, go with Ron Paul. How does the Ron Paul card play into this? Well, the Ron Paul, uh, uh, Paul card played very strongly in a major episode that happened in 2008 or 2007, actually. He was responsible, in my opinion, for the entire... Um, 
intelligent estimate that came out and said that Iran had dismantled or not uh, gone through with their nuclear program. They had to have an excuse to get out of their planned attack on Iran because it would have accrued to the benefit of the anti-war movement and yet an anti-war candidate in the Republican uh, running for president. And so I believe Ron Paul's presence stopped them from going through with Iran. And now they've switched sides, switched the intelligence. Uh, and, uh, but Ron Paul is even stronger now. He's been so vindicated. He is so much a household name now. They've got a real problem because he's running for president again. And so he's going, they're going to have to undermine Ron Paul with double the support that he had before, plus the fact they're going to have to work against uh, Mitt Romney, who's got a lot of money to put himself back in. Once again, as I say, it's not that Mitt Romney is a trustworthy conservative candidate, but he is somebody the establishment has to work hard to, uh, to make sure he doesn't get into office. So it's either, in my opinion, going to be Palin or Newt Gingrich. Newt Gingrich is also on the other side. He's a betrayer. He came from the left. He never was a conservative. He's a globalist. He's written books calling for world government and cashless societies. Uh, and, I mean, this guy wants carbon taxes. That's right. But remember, they tried to shove Rudolph Giuliani down the conservative's throat in 2008. It didn't fly. That's why they had to resurrect McCain with six endorsements right in the middle of the campaign to get him. And they, you know, it was a disaster, but they at least got Romney out. That's what they wanted to do with McCain so that Romney couldn't fill the vacuum by the demise of Rudolph Giuliani. But in this case, they have a true globalist, a new uh, Gingrich, which they're trying to float to the American people. But that's why I say... If they end up allowing Palin to get the Republican nomination, in my opinion, it means they're going to give Barack Obama another four years. No, I agree with you. I mean, she is definitely was built up, then destroyed, now been built back up again, and they are deploying her to try to take over the Tea Party, discredit it, and, and throw the election. And so if they go with Palin, we know they're getting ready to throw the election to Barry Sitaro. I agree completely. And if they go with Newt Gingrich, then Barack Obama's out. We're going to get a Republican warmonger in there who's going to take us to another level. Now, in my long-term analysis, I feel that the issue is not so much directly Iran, and that war is coming. Um, but that's not going to lead to World War III, in my opinion. I think that's going to lead to a larger regional war that's going to allow Israel to clean up and create, at the same time, an increased hatred in the world for both the United States and Israel will be looked upon as the bullies of the world. This plays then into the long-term globalist agenda of handing Russia and China their final excuse to finally take out the bully of the world. Now, I think North Korea is being preserved with kids, kid gloves. You notice how they never uh, put any real... To be used as a future detonator. This is the future trigger event of World War III. That's what I think North Korea is being preserved for. And uh, Iran is only something that will continue to exacerbate the hatred of the Muslim world and the Slavic world against the United States and make us look like the bully of the world. And it will clean up and, and control oil assets. There's a lot of complexity there. But let me get back to the ultimate view of how we view the CIA and all of this. Now, Wayne Madsen has some very, very good analysis. He does come from a bit of a leftist agenda. And so he and other leftists tend to always view... The evil of capitalism and the CIA as the evil monster, which has basically done a coup on the United States and taken over the government. I disagree with that. I think that there's a larger conspiracy, which is built of these globalist uh, leaders. Well, of course. I mean, the CIA is just one deployment cog uh, in the globalist system. That's correct. The CIA is the implementer of those things. It is not the controller. And that's what we have to understand. This is not a CIA coup. These people are taking... Well, we know the Council else. on Foreign Relations takes Club of Rome Bilderberg documents and admits that they then write the bills in whole, whether it's Homeland Security, Immigration Reform, Banker Bailout, and word for word, it's then passed into law. They're openly there writing the policy. Hillary goes to the CFR and says, thank you for giving me my orders. Well, it's like James Jones told the Munich Security Conference in February. Uh, we at the National Security Council take our daily marching orders from Henry Kissinger and Brent Scowcroft and Sandy Berger. We have a 
what did he say, a hierarchy. Now, this is illegal. This is a proof of conspiracy, Alex, as you know. And that was published by them in CFR.org and Foreign Affairs. I mean, Hillary wasn't joking last year when she came and said, I'm here. Thank you for telling me what to do. And then you got Jones, uh, the head of the Security Council, saying, we have a hierarchy. I get my daily briefings from Mr. Kissinger. He runs everything.